On this week's episode of Fishing 411, Mark and Jake showcase a fishery that only the local guides know about. When conditions are right, smelt and other bait fish pile into the mouth of the Niagara River, setting up a mixed bag fishery that can be accessed in small boats and with light tackle. Mark and Jake use Yakima bait maglip plugs trolled using offshore tackle planer boards. Keeping six lines in the water is next to impossible, and the fish are not just sporty, they are worthy of bragging rights. Fish on there, Ned. I'll take it for you. Oh, <laughs> hooked something up. Not, something not fair about that, Jake. I was messing with a planer board, and you get my fish. Oh. Sun's coming up on the big Lake Ontario, and I'll gladly take your fish, Dad. Uh oh, I think I might have made a mistake. Oh. Trying to catch up to him, he might just came off. No, he's he's just spunky. Holy cow! Look at him running all over the place. I'm going to sure we get this over top of that for you. <laughs> Don't forget to check the drag on that, Jake. Oh, yeah, the drag's nice and loose. However, he's going anywhere he wants. It's like a Chinese fire drill around here. We haven't got a net ready, nothing. We're just setting up here this morning. And uh, we're fishing the mouth of the Niagara River today, doing something that we've never showcased on Fishing 4 on 1 in this area. And the, the weather's perfect, all the conditions have just set up perfect for shallow water fishing with maglip. And we're going to show exactly how we're doing this today. But right now, my hands are full. <laughs> Take your time, son. I got a landing net issues. Whew, this fish is just screaming. He does not want to come to the boat. I saw a flash of them, and it was a pretty silver flash, Dad. <laughs> you talking about a cluster this morning. We didn't get our lines in the water yet, and we get we get fish going on. Oh yeah, it's oh, nice. That's a good silver fish. Nice king. So looks like you did pick up that inside board line, but that's all right. It's hard to tell these ones where they want to go, man. They just you got that right. We have not got this fish under control yet, so. Let's see if I can get him to swing around. Get a little closer, kid. I gotta get back in this corner. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. It's gonna take you the rest of the morning to untangle this mess, but you got him, kid. Good job. <laughs> Good job, Jakers. Oh, baby. Oh, let's show this fish off, Dad. That's beautiful. Jake. It's a good way to start off the morning. It's a beautiful king and I can't wait to show you the way that we're catching these fish because I don't know anywhere in the Great Lakes um, where you can do this. They do it here every year and, and we've always tried to hit it but we've never quite hit it right with our plan and our trip. 
Right now, the mouth of the Niagara River is pouring out 50 degree surface temp right now. Absolutely perfect to get these king salmon and all different types of species up in the shallow water. We're gonna target these fish in 30 to 40 feet of water today, and we're gonna catch them using one of my favorite baits, the maglip. The 3.0 and the 3.5 maglip are gonna put a pile of fish in the boat for us today. Well, let's try to flesh things out just a little bit. What's going on here is that we're fishing in shallower water than what we normally would associate with salmon fishing. Most people think of salmon fishing, they think of downriggers, diving planers, lead core line. Today we're using none of that gear. 20 to 30 feet of water, we're using our walleye tackle, 10 pound test, maglip plugs, and we're deploying them a variety of ways. We're deploying them as out on planer boards, just flat lines with no weight. Then we're using snap weights to get some of them a little deeper. And then we're using three ways just to get right down to the bottom. And what makes this a little interesting is that we're fishing in river current. So we're going with the current. So we gotta make long downwind slides or down current slides, turn around, run back up, set up, and do it all over again. So it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. We are catching great fish. It's a big fish. <laughs> all right, I gotta sneak in here, guys, and see if I can do a landing nut job on this one. Very nice fish, Jake. A little closer. Raise your rod tip, please. Got there we go. That's a big old lake trout, man. That's a big old lake trout. <laughs> oh, look at the size of that lake trout. Got a little bit of grass on him there. Let's show that fish off. What a beautiful fish. Man, Dad, that is so cool. Light line, I mean, we're using right now, this fish came on my walleye gear. So I'm talking 10 pound test and a medium action pointer board rod caught that big fish right there. So it's just a riot to fight these fish. And they're coming in shallow water, so a fish like that is gonna have no problem going back. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. Well, this week's episode is filmed out of Lewiston, New York, and it's right on the banks of the Niagara River. We've been here many times before, and the reason we keep coming back is because the Niagara region has such great fishing opportunities. Lots of different species, lots of different ways to catch them. If you're an avid fisherman and you're looking for a great destination, you just can't beat the Niagara region. What do you do when you got two fish on at the same time? Kind of judge which one's the bigger one? <laughs> I took the one that was closest. <laughs> I'm not sure I got the biggest one on here, but I definitely got one on. Double header action in the Niagara Bar. Ooh, baby. This looks like a coho to me. He's right coming in quick and easy. What do you think of that, Jake? I'll tell you what I'll even do for you, Dad. I'll net this one quick, one? and then I'll let you get your outside fish. <laughs> <laughs> is it a small king or is it a coho? I can't tell just yet. Looks like a coho. That'll be a good eating fish. I'll show your fish off, though. Oh, you show my fish off. I'm going to go up here and... Uh, Double up. Oh man, this is so much fun. When people wonder why we continue to come back to the Niagara Bar year after year, you can't get this kind of fishing anywhere else in the Great Lakes. A mixed bag, kinks, cohos, lake trout, brown trout, and lots of them. It's pretty phenomenal. Well, that's your basic run of the mill spring coho. They are uh, a lot better eating than they are for size, but <laughs> they're not the biggest fish, but uh, he fought hard, especially on light tackling. And I caught that on the same rod that I would use the walleye bottom bouncer fish with, so really light action rod, so it was a lot of fun. Let's see if we can get him past. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Another maglet fish. Look at here. Coho, they're kind of messy fish. The scales come off really easily, but most people would agree with me. If you like trout and salmon, this is the best tasting fish in the Great Lakes right there. Right there. Ooh, baby. Box them? Box them. Box them. Well, it's time to set up for another pass, and uh, we're running something with the maglips called the 50 plus 2 method. And what it associates is a, a snap weight um, on the line. So we're going to let out this, the maglip 50 feet, then we're going to put this 2 ounce snap weight on the line, and then we're going to let more leader out, we call it dropper, in order to get that maglip go a little bit deeper. Now the maglip's a great lure, but it only dives about 22 feet, and we need to get it down about 30. And that's what the 2 ounce snap weight is going to do, is get it down just that extra couple of feet. So first things first, let's set that back 50 feet, throw it out there. If you're wondering about this, this technique, this 50 plus 2 technique, it is available on the Precision Trolling Data app. And of course, that's something you can do for uh, an Android phone or an iPhone, so you can look up this data. Now I've got 50 foot out, and I'm gonna continue to let a little bit more line out here. I'm gonna let out 30 more feet, so a total lead of 80 foot, 
and that's going to get me down in that depth range that I'm looking for. All right. Now at that point, we're in good shape, but we don't have to flatline this. I mean, it is the 21st century, right? We can put them on planer boards. And so I'm going to go ahead and put my offshore board on the line here. And then I'm going to let that go out to the side so we can cover a little bit more water. It's a beautiful thing. It's called the 50 plus two method. It's on the precision trolling data app. It's going to catch you a pile of fish. Now, the other thing that's working here is a three-way setup, uh, again, with a maglip. And this time I've gone with a 3.0, a little bit smaller one. And I've removed the belly hook on it so that it doesn't snag on the bottom. And there's a dropper down to a two ounce pencil sinker. I'm gonna put this in the, in the water, make sure that plug is working good. Looks like it is. And then I'm just gonna free spool this all the way to the bottom. And, uh, and that's gonna take out a fair amount of line. And once it hits the bottom, I'm just gonna click over the reel, put it in the rod holder, and we're gonna fish that just as a flat line. This is something that's very popular here locally. You don't see a lot of guys doing this other places, but on the Niagara River, this is the go-to technique for guys catching uh, steelhead, salmon, brown trout, and lakers. This is just craziness. Ooh, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Oh, got one screaming out. This one here. Just change that color out. That must have been a good call. Mine just pulled off. You just pulled off? Yep, unless, unless he's running at the boat. No, he's running at the he's boat. He's running at the boat? He's running at the boat. Crazy. You let me know when you get close and I'll net your fish for you. All right. That is very, very gentlemanly of you, dude. All right, Jake, we're going to try and get him this time. Are you ready? Son, I love those long arms here. <laughs> you know, there's just the two of us, Dad and I, fishing today, so we got our hands full. I literally had a, I'm fighting a fish right now. I had to set this rod back in the rod holder, and I got just a screamer on there. You can see that drag. But I had to put that rod back in the rod holder to net my dad's big king, so then I can pull this rod back up. And we got one literally hanging there. I mean, you just talk about fish. There are so many fish piled in the mouth of the Niagara River right now. Whew. Beautiful fish. One more second. Yeah. Nice. I'll call that a beautiful double. <laughs> double header Chinook Kings in the springtime. Man, oh man. I just, sometimes I wish people at home could be in the boat with us so they could see how chaotic it gets in the boat. I mean, it's crazy. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Daiwa Corporation. Special considerations are provided by Procure Ruthlessly Effective Bait Sense. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. Hey, this is Rob Barnes with Offshore Tackle. Just wanted to show you a couple tricks that'll help you improve your game with trolling. So some of the main spreads that we use in Great Lakes trolling is trolling live bait rigs like spinners and crankbaits. So we're gonna take a look at some general setting points that'll get you started for detecting lighter bites and the key bites coming in on different presentations. So we'll flip the board around. The tattle flag is set up this way. And we're gonna start with what I call the general crankbait. So if you're running deep diving crankbaits, I generally set the front of the spring here into the first peg here, and then what I call the two hole on the flag. Well, that'll give you just enough sensitivity when you're doing those general trolling speeds from one and a half to probably two and a half miles an hour to detect strikes. So a good spinner setting for running half ounce, quarter ounce weights, is I move down to the second hole on the board. I'll go ahead and insert that there. Now I'm actually moving this setting to a lower position within the flag, what I call the zero hole. This will let me pick up any weed ticks that I'm running the spinner across, any perch bites, or very subtle bites from walleyes. Sometimes when they bite light, you gotta feed the board back to them, sweep it, and close the deal. So in closing, using a tattle flag is gonna help put you more fish in the boat because you'll be able to detect light bites from the target species, weeds, and also non-target species. So definitely use these points as a general starting point to fine tune what your baits are doing when trolling and ultimately you'll find yourself more success on the water.
So we mentioned that we're fishing the mouth of the Niagara River, but I really never said why are these fish here? Uh, when you think of king salmon, you think about fish that are way offshore, fish that are super deep. Why are these fish in this 20 to 30 foot of water? It has everything to do with food. You gotta remember, a king salmon has one thing on the brain, and that's food. These fish get upwards of 30 pounds in only a four year lifespan. So they eat and eat and eat. And right now at the mouth of the Niagara River, there is a ton of bait, and the water temperature is perfect. The surface temp is 50 degrees, there's a lot of bait, it's pretty much the perfect situation to have king salmon move up to the mouth of the river. Now what we have when you look at this area, especially in the Lewiston, New York area, is you're going to see coming out of the Niagara River, it's deep, and then it comes up to a shallow shelf, and that's where these fish seem to be. They're up on the flat in the shallow shelf. If you go way offshore, you're going to find something they call the Niagara Bar, and that's where it drops back off deep again, and I'm sure there's kings there right now as well, but because there's a lot of bait in the shallow water, there's a lot of king salmon all piled in this small area. What we're doing is we're going with the current coming out the mouth of the Niagara River. So we can't really turn around and go back because then we're fighting the current the whole time. So we'll just pick our gear up, run back up, and the second go around, I think we're gonna speed up a little bit. Dad, he's right here, but he's really green. I gotta get a landing in here, son. There, I think I got him back, whoa. <laughs> when you're fishing for king salmon with this light of line, you don't tell them where to go, they tell you where they're going. And you hope that you can keep them out from away from the boat. I think I might have gave you some bad advice on the electric motor gear. Because now he can go wherever he wants to go. Whew. This fish is whipping my butt, Dad. He's all over the place. Look at that, King. Beautiful fish. Nice. What a beautiful fish. I'm just awestruck by this. Absolutely awestruck by this. Wow, that's a gorgeous king. Look at that. Look well, at that, just broke off too. What time? You get him in the net? Yeah, yeah I got him in the net. Look that's at that. A, that's a big king. Broke him off at the last second right that's when you put him king. in the net. Yeah. <laughs> Look, at that. Look at the size that's of that thing. Big. Spring kings, they don't get a heck of a lot better than that. That's a really nice fish. That's a beautiful fish. With 10 pound test, my walleye planer board rods, and sometimes it's better to be lucky than good because that fish literally broke off in as net. you were scooping them with the net. Yeah. Uh, what a beautiful fish. Let's talk a little bit about plug colors for salmon. In the Great Lakes, salmon plugs seem to produce better when there's a lot of silver on them, and then the other colors you're looking for is green and chartreuse. If you get those combinations on a plug, they're probably gonna catch fish for you anywhere in the Great Lakes that you find king salmon and coho salmon. And three colors here that I just can't live without. The first one here is called Green Machine. Uh, the other one is called Grinch. And the one down here on the end is called Lemonhead. These three routinely work for us wherever we take them. Those three colors will get you lots of salmon and they'll also do well on other things like steelhead and brown trout as well. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. Well, one of the things that you encounter when you're trout and salmon fishing is that these fish bleed. Um, most of the time when you've landed a fish, there's gonna be blood. And if that blood gets on the lure, that's not a good thing because blood is not a natural scent, it's an alarming scent. So what we wanna do when we have a bloody lure is we wanna wash it off really quick with a little soap and water. Once we get that unnatural scent off, it's time to put natural scent back on. And that's where the Procure comes in. We use something called Super Gel, and there's a variety of formulas that work good here. We like Bloody Tuna, uh, but Emerald Shiner, Smelt, or Alewife would also work really good. Clean the plug first, put a natural scent product on it, and then from there, you're gonna catch lots and lots of fish. Well, this style of fishing is almost like going back to the basics when it comes to fishing. I mean, it's very straightforward. You have a plug, you have a three-way swivel with a weight on it, and we're using these pretty light action rods. These rods are what we use for bottom bouncer fishing for walleyes, so 10-pound um, test monofilament, a little small, this is a 100 size Lexa uh, line counter reel, so we can kind of duplicate our leads. And we're just setting it in the, in the corner of the, the boat right here, just flat lining it off the back of the boat. 
but we've caught a lot of fish on this on this setup today and you talk about fun multiple times I've actually had the rod in my hand when I felt the fish bite or you can also just set it in the rod holder and just let it ride while you're trolling along so it's a very versatile setup um, this is that uh, the North Coast series from Daiwa this is a rod we use all the time, whether it's bottom bouncer fishing or three-way fishing. It's just become a versatile rod in our lineup that we've been able to catch a lot of different species of fish in all over the Great Lakes. He's just it's turned close. his head a lot. He just would not turn. These rods are just light enough that I don't have the, the power to turn his head. I need him to do it. Come on, baby. Got him there, Jake. Oh, That's a big lake trout right there. That is a big trout. You know, one of the things that you're going to see when you come to Lake Ontario is just the average size of these fish. I mean, that is a gorgeous lake trout. That's high teens. You're talking about a fish that's, you know, 36, 37 inches would be my guess. That's a gorgeous lake trout. And it, this is just a dime a dozen here. We catch so many lake trout that size. And all the traveling we do, that is a big lake trout anywhere you go. Oh, baby. We got a little competition going on here between Jake and I. He's been holding his uh, his rod in the hand because he's been getting bites doing that. I put mine in the rod holder, and so he's gotten three bites to mine, but uh, but mine hooked up. <laughs> oh man, are we having fun today? Fun, fun, fun. Well, not surprisingly. Um, early on, the salmon stuff was just crazy. Low light is when those salmon are going to be the most active, especially in shallow water. But as the day has worn on, it's kind of nice. These uh, lake trout are pretty entertaining, and we've got a lot of lake trout here as the sun has gotten up. I'm not complaining about that. They fight good, and they are abundant. I think I got him under control this time, Jake. Thank you, son. Oh, he's, a, he's a toad. Boy, these fish are healthy. Man, oh man. Hey, my name is Mark Romanak. You've been watching Fishing 401. I hope you enjoyed today's show. It certainly is a different slant on salmon and trout fishing. See you here, same time, same place, next week. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorance Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, and Jay's Sporting Goods. From away from the boat. I think I might have gave you some bad advice on the electric motor here. Because now he can go wherever he wants to go. Whew. This fish is whipping my butt, Dad. <laughs>